Hi guys, Andy here, Kent Survival. As I said on my last video, it's going to be something different this week. And today I'm going to be staying overnight in St James's Church. I'm in Cooling, Kent. And this church was built in 1241. Now quite importantly, I have permission to stay in this church tonight, so I'm not trying to influence anyone to do the same. I'll put details about how you can do that as well, maybe in your area, uh, down in the information description box below. Um, but yeah, so let's get in there and have a little look at it. Well, we're starting to lose the light, so I'm going to cut away and show you some information on the church, and then I'm going to set up my uh, bed and make this place homely for the night. The first record of a village here is mentioned in a charter of 808 AD, but by far the most important point in its history came in 1241 when the de Cobham family became lords of the manor and under their patronage the present church was constructed and the great neighbouring building Cooling Castle was built. The Church of St James's dates mainly from the later 1200s and early 1300s, although there may well have been a Saxon church on this site. It consists of a western tower nave and chancel with a south porch to the nave and a 19th century vestry to the south of the chancel. The nave, chancel and lower part of the tower were gradually erected between 1280 and 1320 and form a complete village church of this period. It appears that the tower was heightened and completed later in the century, perhaps 1400. The porch was rebuilt in the 19th century. St James's Church is best known from its association with Charles Dickens, who lived locally and prominently featured the church in the opening scenes of Great Expectations. This association led to the 13 small lozenge-shaped graves in the churchyard to be known as Pip's Graves. In reality, all 13 graves are from the infants of two local families. The large chest tomb to the south of the tower belongs to John Comport of Cooling Castle who died in 1827. With five parish churches all within two miles of each other there was a need for pastoral reorganisation resulting in Cooling Church being declared redundant in 1976. St James's was vested into the care of the Church's Conservation Trust in 1978 and is to this day popular with visitors.
around the, um, the cemetery, around the churchyard, and notice that there's a lot of bats out there at the moment, which is pretty cool. Um, this is the bed for tonight. Uh, there's two because I'm not on my own, but um, you probably not see the person that I am with. I've got an inflatable double bed to put on top of this. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. A couple of sleeping bags and um, wool blanket as well because it's, it's pretty cold in here. Got quite a cold nose. Um, got a heater as well, a little electric heater because there is a power supply in here. And we've been provided with a couple of hot water bottles as well, which I think will come in handy later. So I'm just going to get this put on here, see how that works out, and uh, probably then have some food. It would be rude not to. I've just been outside in the churchyard watching the bats. They're circling the tower, uh, hunting for moths because the tower's lit by light that's in the cemetery out there. So it's pretty cool just to watch them. Also just realised I'm drinking a Camden Hells in a church. <laughs> so maybe that's a sign. This place is pretty amazing though. It's, uh, it's a really cool experience to have a church like this to yourself in really good condition. I mean, I've obviously stayed in kind of church ruins and stuff before, but this is a first. And they do this around the country as well. So yeah, it's pretty cool. We've got a tea and coffee and stuff like that, power. And um, you can't have open flames, just, um, just LED lights, but you know, it's good, it's good. I figure I'm going to have some food in a moment. Well, like I said earlier, there is two of us here tonight, so I've got two of the exact same menu from uh, USMREs. And if I can get into it, which is probably unlikely because of filming, yep, I knew it. <laughs> Into it. And this is beef taco, so that's going to be a beef. A couple of tortillas, MRE spoon, brew kit and accessories, that's some cheese spread, a grape beverage powder, no fruit juice. I don't know what a grape is if it's not fruit. Flameless ration heater. It's going to be a beverage coffee bag. Some pears. And our sleeve. And finally, a nut raisin mix as a side. So you've probably all seen me do this a million times before. Put your flameless ration heater, tear off the top, add a little water. Put in your main and that will heat through. You can put in your tortillas as well and they'll soften up. So I'm going to do that now. Have a nice meal for two. All right, so I'm just going to take the top off the FRH. Slide in our beef taco. And I'm going to put the tortillas just the other side of the element there. Get them nice and warm and supple. And just enough water to the fill line. Whoa, a little over. And 
leaning on a rock or something. The reason I'm using these is because you can't use any open flames or stoves in here. Could do stuff in the uh, cemetery, but this is just convenient. And that should go in a second. Well, the first time this has ever really happened to me, both FRHs failed. One was just warming up slowly, the other one not at all really. So um, I've got a gas stove with me, so I've come out to the churchyard. I'm just heating them in some boiling water with the tortillas and the, um, the cheese as well, just to soften that up. This is like a knockoff uh, rocket stove, APG. It's from one of the uh, Chinese stores like AliExpress or something. Um, I've used it once before, seems to work quite well. So, yeah, if you're interested in them, uh, you get more Valley Express, I think, and uh, I think it's about £35, a lot cheaper than the jet boil. I'm kind of hoping this person hasn't got any relatives in here because <laughs> it's bloody massive. So we're just going to head off to bed in a moment and I thought I'd uh, bring my trail cameras with me and set them up either end of the church. You never know what you'll uh, find in an 800 year old building. So there's one pointing down here and another at the other end by the font there. Good morning, um, as you probably have just seen, I was up before the uh, sun, uh, went out into the churchyard and did some filming, watched the sun come up. It was a very foggy morning indeed, but that kind of lifted as the sun come up, and it was a freezing cold night. We had a couple of wool blankets, a duvet, uh, three hot water bottles, and other things, lots of thermals and everything, but it was, it was still pretty chilly last night. Uh, the airbed was uh, okay, not the best to inflate though, it's uh, got a built-in pump, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Had a look at the trail camera and there's a couple of uh, clips on there, so I'll stick them in in a moment. You can see whatever was on there, because I don't know yet. Might have some orbs, <laughs> we shall see. 
But yeah, just gonna get ready now, packed up a bit, and uh, head out. That's us all packed up, heading off home now. Uh, it's quite an experience, I'd uh, recommend that to anyone. I, as I said, I'll put the link below to uh, how you do this. Um, they've got a few churches around the country where you can stay in them overnight, um, but it's a pretty cool experience. Uh, in the summer, probably a little bit warmer without the central heating and that, but uh, very cool, very cool indeed. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll uh, see you on the next one. Goodbye.